Hi, everyone. Dr. B here again with Dr. Stacy. We're going to talk about whitening. Whitening your teeth. Is it safe? Uh, this is a huge market. $11 billion spent in uh, two years ago. I think it was 2021. Um, you know, just, just on purchasing whitening gel on Amazon, uh, you know, not, not going to your dentist to get the gel and get the whitening treatment. That was a $1.4 billion industry. I mean, this, this has really taken off and it is the considered to be the most desirable dental procedure, uh, obviously over root canals, but you know, let's say you have a hole in your tooth, you have a cavity or a toothache. Most people want their teeth white before they want that taken care of. So, so we're going to try and demystify the the whole whitening thing. What's safe? And there, there's a lot of myth and lore on whitening. And all you have to do is go to the web, and you'll see all these uh, kind of soccer mom recipes on how to, you know, whiten your teeth. And 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 dentists are in on it too, right? The whole dental profession. Um, the ADA tried to the American Dental Association tried to categorize the whole whitening process, the gel that we use, we'll talk more about that, um, as a drug. And of course, that gives the dental profession more control Then that whole one and a half billion dollar market goes away where people can order it on Amazon. But really, it's a cosmetic product. And we'll talk about the EU, um, how the EU looks at it. They're typically uh, have a great safety record and and they're they have a reputation for really protecting their constituents and but here it's a free for all in the US we'll talk a little bit about Canada and then most importantly a lot of young people uh, or a lot of parents want their kids to get their teeth whitened and I think that's where Stacy will set us straight because baby teeth well young adult permanent teeth are a lot different they're not fully mature there's a lot going on there so so uh how how often do you get a request for moms coming in dad saying you know what i want you know i want my kids teeth whiter uh, you get this often i'm sure where after the adult teeth come in they're yellower because you know i'll let you explain that but there's a lot of concern about how the teeth look in their children yeah. Not the crowding, not the small jaw or the airway right. or so uh how how do you handle that? Yeah. I like this subject so much because we are we are such an aesthetically driven society, especially more so now than ever. And I think we'll speak to this later. Um we're 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 okay with that, but we do choose health over aesthetics. Um, that's a functional kind of take, but we want to be respectful of people wanting to feel good about themselves and feeling confident. Uh, but I will say, you know, I've been at this, I th I'm going to my 18th year and it's definitely becoming a more common question, concern and request. Can I bleach my child's teeth? Sometimes as young as six or seven years old, I've been asked, um, Isn't that amazing? which is quite amazing. Um, so I am concerned with it because, you know, I, to your point, a lot of times these children are coming in, they have cavities, they have narrow palates and airway issues, they have other bigger fish to fry, if you will, but the chief complaint of the family, and it's usually the adult, not the child, uh, is that their teeth look too dark. Mm -hmm. um, so I will say this, uh, this is really important. It's one of my top questions that I get on, on my platform, on Instagram, but also in my office. It's very common around the age of seven or eight years old when your child's, it's, it seems to always be noticed when the lower incisors come in. So the lower permanent, you know, incisor, the front teeth, they come in. So these are the adult teeth coming in and they happen to come in right next to a baby right. tooth a primary tooth, which is like the canine. So you're right. an adult tooth right next to a, a baby tooth. And I will tell you, primary teeth are brighter and they are whiter. Uh, and adult teeth are a little bit darker. And so that really is concerning to many parents. They don't realize that. And they think there's something wrong with their child or their, their child's teeth are dirty or they're not doing a good job brushing. What is wrong? And I have to reassure the parents that actually their child's tooth is a perfectly normal shade. Mm -hmm. For an adult tooth, we actually have shade guides in dentistry. I will, you know, I won't bore you with the details, but the universal shade tends to be um, A2 is what it's called for adult teeth. A1 is for baby teeth. So A2 is a little darker. Um, but now we want the Hollywood smile. We want these bright, bright, bleached white teeth 
which you can achieve, but not without consequence. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But my biggest point is if your child's adult teeth are coming in and they're a little bit darker, very likely that is totally normal. That is a right. normal shade. Um, and it is, it has to do with the mineralization. You know, baby teeth are really special and unique. Um, they're meant to fall out. They're meant to be easily resorbable. Um, so they're, the way the light refracts off them is just different because of that mineralization difference. It's There's also less I, dentin underneath yes. the enamel. It's a yeah, different it's, structure. It's totally different structure. It's actually yep. why baby teeth are really hard to ha keep fillings in. Like baby yep. teeth, exactly. the, the white fillings, they pop out a lot. And it, the adults come in and they think it's something we've done wrong as dentists, but it's just because primary teeth bond differently. Right. Um, and every pediatric dentist out there that might be listening to is like smiling and nodding yeah, yeah you know it's, yeah. It's even some hard. general dentists yeah yeah yes exactly sorry to say um of course but um so i will say that so yeah i do get requests for it we always try to take first of all we try to reassure the family it's normal um and i will just say this too as a caveat i i think our young people are just so over inundated with what the perfect body is, what the perfect hair is, what the perfect smile is. So I would just say as a parent, be mindful what you say in front of your child, because mm -hmm. uh, I a lot of times your kids don't even notice that their teeth are a little bit darker, which again right. is normal, but now you've created this sort of um, an area for them to be a little self-conscious. So right. if, you, if you have a concern, I might just privately speak to the dentist about that away from your child. Um, because I, I, I do see a lot of, um, confidence and, and actually mental health issues in our young people these days, because they, just can't, they yeah. can't keep up with the Hollywood aesthetic and TikTok and Instagram and the, and the, you know, Photoshop and the filters and all of that stuff. And I will tell you most of these bright white teeth that you are seeing on these celebrities, they're not real. They're veneers yep. or they're heavily, heavily bleached, but more likely they're veneers or they're Photoshopped. You know, Sometimes yeah. they're Photoshopped, even in video, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So um, so we always try to take natural approaches and I know that that's your preference too. Um, so I can speak to that. I mean, we, we do like to use a nano hydroxyapatite toothpaste, um, nano, will fill in the tubules more it'll create a smoother surface so the way the light reflects and refracts off the tooth it will it will make it seem brighter um oil pulling is another way that i've seen can brighten a smile now it's not going to get you to this bright white hollywood aesthetic but it can lighten a bit and there's not a lot of data to say why is it the lauric acid in it um you know, who knows, is it placebo? But I see that patients who oil pull, um, they do tend to have brighter, whiter teeth. I think it has a lot to do with just oral microbiome. It's definitely and reflectivity it's as well, see. because yeah. you know the biofilm, if it's very thick, you're gonna get a very dull luster, uh, similar to the nano hydroxyapatite. And we have scanning electron microscopy photos, images of this. And we know that if you're using nano hydroxyapatite, over fluoride, fluoride is going to give you a wavy finish mm -hmm. as it re as it re uh, mineralizes the tooth surface, and that's going to scatter light, and it it is a different look. Uh, we talk about yeah. two things in color: it's the value and the chroma uh, mm -hmm. of a tooth. So we we always break it down to two uh, two segments. It's not just color, and the color of teeth is very complex. Um, you can over whiten your teeth. Uh, you can over whiten your teeth to the point where you get these little gray lines mm -hmm. at the very tips of your teeth. Um, it's um, it's a very, uh, how do you feel about the dentist that brings it up with every patient? That really bugs me because it's such a personal thing where, oh, your teeth seem a little yellow. We have a procedure for that. Uh, Doesn't that seem a little- My honest answer is I find it to be a little unethical. Depending. Yeah. So- it's a big money maker in a practice. Yep. Um, it's a big money maker, and where dentistry is becoming harder and har harder to be, be a profitable industry, right. it's a great way to make money off patients. Yep. It's the same way I think a lot of patients walk out needing four quadrants of scaling and replaning. Right. Um, 
where they may not, it, you know, insurance might cover it. Patients want a brighter, wider smile, even though they didn't come in with that as their chief complaint, they're kind of getting upsold. So I don't like that at all. And it's, again, it's not without consequence. You know, some of these in-office bleaching systems, I mean, we can dig into this now. A lot of them are using a really high percentage of the carbamide peroxide mm -hmm. and or hydrogen peroxide. And so carb carbamide peroxide, is it has hydrogen peroxide in it, but that's kind of the active ingredient on in a lot of these more potent bleaching agents. Um, and it's not without risk, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I will tell you, I'm, you know, I know you are too. I'm on TikTok a lot and Instagram, but especially on TikTok, bleaching is a big deal on TikTok. And I see, to your point earlier, I see a lot of these DIY yep. at home bleaching suggestions and most of them are using hydrogen peroxide and right. using it every day you know which i i i please don't do that you know i i think hydrogen peroxide has its benefits especially in a lower diluted percentage like three percent you dilute it maybe you use it very very infrequently but to use it daily, we need to discuss what it's doing to your oral microbiome. So mm -hmm. it is antimicrobial and right. it has, so that that's good, but it's not selective. So it, it's damaging your, your beneficial or commensal bacteria yeah, too. There's, there's research out there. Uh, there are some studies and I've shared them on the website, ask the dentist, uh, uh, a connection to oral cancer with frequent daily use of hydrogen peroxide as a mouthwash. Yeah. Uh, so what if you're using it in toothpaste or in a whitening gel? I, I do know some people that whiten daily Yeah. in the morning as Me part too. of their routine. So they look I fresh know. and bright at the office. So, and let's, let's talk about the dangers of whitening. Um, and, and how did we get so cavalier, especially in this country about whitening? And I'm talking about the dental profession. Uh, and it's everywhere. Uh, Amazon, you can get this anywhere. And the DIYs on the web, everybody's looking to whiten faster and cheaper. Yeah. Uh, most people would like to keep the dentist out of the equation because that does increase the cost. Sure. But provisional supervision actually does get you a better result. And yeah. that's because of the tray and the design of the tray. Holding a 10% uh, solution of carbamide peroxide up against the tooth for a half hour, maybe an hour at a time, maybe every other day. It depends on the patient, depends on the age of the patient and the desired result. That probably I think is doable, not without risk, but again, there are people that will say, it doesn't matter, Dr. B, I'm just going to whiten my teeth. What is the safest way to do it? And that's what I would recommend is a very well-made custom tray. It could be an aligner, uh, aligners typically are good. It has to be pulled away or trimmed back and it cannot hold the gel up against the gums because hydrogen peroxide is a strong oxidizer. It's going to, it's going to alter your oral microbiome. So, so how did we get to the point where everyone's recommending it and on it and, and even dentists are like, yeah, sure. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll give you a kit and you can do it at home. Follow the money, Dr. Brenna. Right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh, and we're, yeah, we're an aesthetic society. I mean, look all the look at all the things we're doing to our bodies yeah. these days. Cosmetics, so makeup. Yep. They make up. They make yep. so much money. Surgery. Yeah. But you know, as functional dentists, we need to call a spade a spade. And so, right. um, so what can happen? What are the what are the potential dangers of whitening? Okay, so to your point, if if these stronger solutions touch your gum tissue, it can mm -hmm. actually. Uh, be very corrosive and mm -hmm. kind of burn the tissue and the top and layer off. Yeah. Yeah, and repetitive exposure to that can cause recession. Right. You also hear about sensitivity after, and people just kind of brush that like, oh, sensitivity. Well, why? I mean, what that that's coming from inside in the nerve. So that means yeah. it's affecting the reaction of your tooth. I mean, if that happens repetitively, you could have irreversible damage to your pulp and your nerve. You right. know, that's what concerns me. Um and then you're, you know, you're cold sensitive now. And so you're not eating as well. And, you know, or brushing or brushing. Yeah. yeah I mean, right. it, some people after they bleach, they're very sensitive yes, and, for days. Um, it, you know, it can be damaging to your enamel. And again, you know, you and I are very passionate about the oral microbiome. So anything you put in your mouth, I would say probably besides water, but even that to a degree, depending on the pH of your water, right. it's going to alter your oral microbiome. 
microbiome and right. you know we're resilient creatures but at some point you can do damage and um you can well, have yeah. when you're that sensitive uh after whitening to me that indicates that the tubules the porosities of the root surface are dry. I mean, they've lost their hydration. And I, I, I know you remember this, uh, even though you work mostly on deciduous teeth, but when you cut dry on a tooth, you can literally harm that tooth. You can, oh, yeah. uh, you can harm it to the point, to, the, to a degree where you may even need a root canal. So again, you don't want to desiccate the tooth. Also, the pH of some of these whitening gels are well in the acidic uh, zone uh, or even basic, you know, like an alkaline, basic, like a sodium yeah. hydroxide, you know, to help perm okay. your hair. You really want a neutral pH, very hydrating gel. I would keep it under 10%. The EU has mandated to, uh, they measured a little differently. They're, they're looking at the actual concentration of hydrogen peroxide in the carbamide gel. Uh, mm -hmm. which is the, uh, it's a polymer with, um, it's got urea in it, but they limited it to 6%, which is about the equivalent to about 10 to 12% gel here in the US. And then over the counter is limited in Europe to 0.1. We know that doesn't work. That's probably less that's in a toothpaste, yeah. but I think there's good reason. There's, they're, they're being very cautious. And I think that's wonderful. And now um, you can get some of these really high percentage products on Amazon, yep. you know, 35%. Yeah. And, and yep. the instructions say, you know, use only every so many days, Right. but just like how sometimes if you have a headache and you say, well, I'm going to take one aspirin oh, or the instructions are take one aspirin. Well, two must be better. Right. Or more people are overdoing it. And so they are bleaching yeah. multiple times a week, every day. Um, the other product that I think is really oversold um, is is our charcoal toothpaste. Yeah. And I, I heard you speak about this too. And so, you know, they, the selling point is this will brighten and whiten your teeth, but they're very abrasive mm -hmm. and that they can, can damage your enamel. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm okay with a charcoal toothpaste, but not every day, you know, right. you just have to be very mindful about this and and, right. and who's the, making it you know who's formulating yeah. it and what's the source of the charcoal Char charcoal can be very abrasive but that's how most whitening toothpaste work i would say all yeah. uh, you can't put enough hydrogen peroxide in a whitening toothpaste uh and because it's not being held up against the tooth but you can make a toothpaste very abrasive which will scrub the tooth clean of any staining and and also the pellicle temporarily the the biofilm the skin of your tooth and of course that can desiccate the tooth as well. It can lead to sensitivity, but the tooth will look a little shinier and cleaner if you've used a very abrasive toothpaste. And some of these toothpastes are, I mean, they're well beyond what I would recommend, even in frequent use. Uh, that's the RDA scale, the relative dentinal abrasivity scale. And most, we like to keep toothpaste, what, under 30? And these toothpastes are at 200 and above in terms yeah. of abrasivity. And again, those are meant for occasional use. But like you said, with aspirin, it's kind of like, well, you know, I mean, I'm in, I'm in pain and I'll just take this for the, you know, near future and everything will be fine. But you really have to, dosage is important in anything that you put in the body, including toothpaste. Yes. And frequency. And frequency. Um, yeah. So, I mean, people ask a lot, what would I recommend? So I would say you know the bleaching is okay just do it infrequently mm -hmm. but if you're looking for more natural ways to brighten and whiten your smile mm -hmm. we spoke about nano hydroxyapatite mm -hmm. but one one strategy would be you know do the bleaching and then be very mindful about things that stain so right. thereafter like if, if you're someone that really wants those bright white teeth mm -hmm. i would just be very careful with coffee and tea and wine and berries um, and then mouth breathing as well, you know, that affects your oral microbiome. There are um, microbes, we call them uh, chromatic or chromic bacteria. Right. Yep. We don't, I, I spoke to um, our friends at Bristol, the researchers there about this. We don't f really understand these bacteria very well, but they're colorful. Very. And so they, they can be gray. Orange, or brown. green. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And they usually come off with a cleaning, but you know, we, we want to keep harmony in our biome and our oral bi microbiome. So right. yeah. um, I think taking 
paying attention to prebiotic fiber is important because that's feeding the good guys, but also right. probiotics as well. And so if you are going to use hydrogen peroxide occasionally, I would be very thoughtful about taking oral probiotics so that perhaps we're reintroducing and um, crowding out some of the bad bacteria again. Uh, you know, I think all the things we speak about are just keeping a healthy mouth. Um, just be very thoughtful if you're choosing to use some of these bleaching agents too. Right. I think desiccation is important. Uh, you mentioned it with uh, mouth breathing. When you wake up with a very dry mouth, your teeth are very prone to picking up stain because you've, you know, you've, you've altered the biofilm. Um, also, I think, I don't know if you've noticed this, but with a lot of my patients that are under a lot of stress, they brux heavily, they've got craze lines, uh, a lot of wear facets, those teeth tend to be yellower. So there's a, there's a systemic response to the, that, that affects the color of your teeth. People that are having a rough time in life, they tend to have yellower teeth. There's also a genetic predilection. There are differences in color, uh, certainly ethnicity based, uh, yes. and, and then crowding. If you have a lot of crowding, you're going to, mm -hmm. your teeth are going to get shadowing. I mean, there's part of that lighting, but also you're going to get a lot of staining and a lot of buildup in between the areas where the teeth are overlapped because those areas are hard to clean. So yeah. there, there's a lot going on. It could even be that the oral microbiome and the bugs, you know, in, in all their glory, whether they're working well together or not, you know, does that determine the color of your teeth? Um, also uh, growing up with certain minerals in your yes, drinking water absolutely. as you grow up. Fluoride, yeah. fluoride can affect the color of your teeth. Too much fluoride ingestion. Flor flor um, fluorosis, uh, that can make your teeth look pretty, pretty weird. Yeah. And the under mineralization, that's a good point. Like hypoplastic enamel right. it's it's, I really believe it's on the rise. I haven't seen data con confirm that, but my N of one office is certainly showing that. Yep. Um, and so a lot of parents come in thinking their teeth, their children's teeth are stained, but really it's intrinsic or inside the tooth. And it was from mineral right. deficiency. Disease. Yeah, yeah. You know, and remember the later stages of fluorosis, I think type two and type three are not white lesions. Um, They're brownish, yellowish. Terrible. Lesions, right. So to your point, I mean, many people, you know, you hear about fluoride making your teeth stronger, but there's many people that actually mm -hmm. believe the way it creates that wave like surface, yep. it's actually weakening. Yep your teeth long term makes so it more brittle food, it's a different food, structure good for thought it is yeah. it's like i call it franken tooth franken tooth franken because uh, instead yeah. of hydroxyapatite we're making fluorapatite but that's another podcast you know a lot of people ask me about baking soda too yeah. uh, and i'm a fan you know baking soda neutralizes the mouth you can make like a slurry and brush yep. with it the, Abr it. the um rda is five to Six. seven Right. I've seen it's low. Yeah, yep. it's very low. Yep. And that can have a whitening effect to some degree. Um, so I think uh, to your point, hydration, collagen, you know, all of these things are mm. really important to maintain glistening, uh, hydrated teeth. So there are more natural ways to do it. I think the biggest message is just don't overdo your bleaching. That's, right. that's my take home. Again, these TikTok videos, I've seen these these people's teeth, they're so bright and they're yep. just, they're using hydrogen peroxide multiple times a day. Right. And I can almost promise you that there's going to be consequences to their oral health because of it. I agree. And then some of these people that have very bright teeth have composite fillings. Of course, the whitening was done before and the composite matches uh, the, the end result of, you know, the after whitening, but then when they get into certain lighting conditions, the composites don't mm -hmm. refract light the same way that the teeth do. And you literally start, you can, each filling will stand out as a black spot. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things you have to be careful of. Um, how about- Veneers how about, too. I, oh. Sorry to interrupt you, but I would say veneers. Yep. So that's the other trend I see, sadly, on some yep. of these social media channels are these young people who have perfectly healthy teeth and the ethics of these dentists doing these procedures is for mm -hmm. another day. Right. But, you know, they're just, you know, it's supposed to be a minimally invasive procedure, but they're still often removing some tooth structure. And so anytime you add any different surface into the mouth, you are potentially changing the microbiome. You're creating a different surface texture, nooks and crannies for just different niches of bacteria to right. live in. And the thing is, nothing in dentistry is forever. So those veneers are going to have to be replaced. 
Um, they pop at, at a off, greater cost at a greater cost the second yes, time around, they, right? They come off con they come off a lot, you yep. know. Um, so just be careful with that. I mean, you do. I mean, we want to say you do you. You do what makes you happy and makes you feel good about yourself. But I just think um, you just being cautious. I think right. would be my advice. Everyone. Yeah, with cosmetic work, I would always tell the patient go very slowly in this regard get lots of second opinions, really analyze by looking at, you know, magazines, any, any kind of, I mean, and, and check off the ones that you think are unrealistic and, and let's get together again and talk about it. And, and you can tone their, what their notion is of what's right and what's wrong in terms of cosmetics greatly mm -hmm. just by having those discussions. But yeah, if you, if a patient comes in and they say, well, how much are eight or 10 veneers? you know, 20, 30 grand. Okay. When can you start? I mean, that's not the kind of conversation it should be. No, I agree. Because, you know, it's expensive, but what about well, uh, whitening too, strips? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of over the counter brands. I'm, I usually recommend Luminu mm -hmm. to most patients because it, do because it doesn't have hydrogen peroxide in it. Uh, yes. Yes. yes less aggressive ingredients i would right. say there's right. still some essential oils in there i get asked about bite mm -hmm. um their bleach a lot i think it's cleaner i don't love it i'm going to be honest again there's a lot of essential oils i also just the application process just doesn't seem efficacious to me right. um i think it's great on paper but i think you might be wasting your money a little bit mm -hmm. um you know, if you have great results from it, okay. But again, I would not overdo it. Um, cause there still is a carbamide derivative in, in bite. Right, um, right. Which is what works. I mean, to be yeah, honest, that stuff, exactly. that's the stuff that works. It, it does work. Yeah. It does work. Um, I will say too, like sometimes just getting, you know, as airway focused dentists, uh, I'm very much into the function of the occlusion and the way the jaws line up. So sometimes just getting orthodontics or like Invisalign, Helps sometimes just straightening the teeth, you'll yep. you'll feel they look brighter and whiter because certain teeth aren't rotated and capturing shadows and things exactly. of that nature too. And totally. then and then it's two birds, one stone. You're getting right. better aesthetics, but you're actually getting better function, which is really yeah. what our goal is. That's a really good point. I call that the misinterpretation of the need to whiten. In other words, they know that they have a cosmetic issue, but they're not sure what's actually causing it. As dentists, we know what's causing it uh, typically. And so it may not be that they want their teeth whiter. They may want their teeth straighter. It, hmm. You really have to sit down with the patient and find out exactly what are you actually looking for and yeah. what actually bothers you. And it may not be color. It may not be the uh, intrinsic color of the tooth. Yeah, I love That's that. Times, yeah. time, I love time with the patient, yep. which is why I'm so skeptical of these offices that, you know, if they're advertising bleaching or, you know, get bleaching for $99, right. I'd be cautious with those offices. And, or if they bring it up, let's say you're in there just for general work yeah. and they said, oh, by the way, you, you should consider whitening. Your teeth are a little on the yellow side uh yeah. that that's that's a it, it's a personal decision if you're happy with the way things look then i would stick with that um yeah, exactly. let's um what about the led light ultraviolet light yeah. does it accelerate uh the process is it recommended is there any heat generation is it bad for the pulp these are all questions that people are asking i think they're good questions yeah i mean they say the companies say no mm -hmm. um I have concerns with it. I'm just skeptical of every everything. Of course, of course as you should be. And where's easy. the clinical evidence? Yeah. I, so way back when, I, I've been in practice, uh, well, almost, yeah, twice as long as you. Um, I'm not bragging about that, by the way. <laughs> um, it's, it's good. Yeah, That's why it's, you're my mentor. Uh, there was a company, was it New Bride? Or, anyway, they would, they would, the dentist would buy into a franchise. It would be 40 or 50 grand plus mm -hmm. all the costs associated with it. And then they would get that label of being a new bright, uh, again, I don't know if that's the correct term, uh, office. And then they would, through a national ad campaign, direct patients to you. This is back yeah. 20, 30 years ago. And their big ticket item, what made them unique 
compared to what dentists were doing back then. And again, whitening started off with a dentist, and I think it was in California, that noticed that the hydrogen peroxide gel that they were using for cold sores, which was getting on the teeth, would whiten the teeth. That's how it started. And that was in the late 60s. So yeah, so then, then the dentist fabricated trays and they put the gel in there and then they modified the gel and all that. But anyway, this company, these dentists would buy into it and their, their unique feature was this led light and it was a very yeah. expensive light it was zoom wasn't it zoom, zoom. no it was before yeah. zoom it was before uh, zoom. zoom is the second it was one. a very high-end boutique kind of thing yeah they had dentists there i mean now you can in some states you can have a whitening uh kiosk in the shopping mall be careful of that right yeah. uh, but anyway and then I guess my point is, is that later all the dentists figured out that it wasn't working and they were sold the bill of goods and there was a class action lawsuit against them and they went bankrupt. So yeah. that was the first time that I came across this light. Now I'm seeing the light in, uh, in a battery operated form. In yes, other words, they're I not know. plugged in. I There's no power. Yeah. The LED uh, isn't putting out enough power. So I would be very careful. You can whiten your teeth without these LED lights. There are plenty of studies out there that indicate that it could be safer. And that's the last thing you, you want to do is accelerate the whitening process. Once you get that car carbamide, carbamide peroxide in the tubules and in between the enamel rods, you don't want to fire that stuff up and, and make it stronger and more reactive. It's an oxidizer. Yes. So again, go slow. I'm not a fan of the lights, especially battery damaged. operated. Because damaging your pulp, I mean, this is not good. This Irreversible is very, in some cases. This is where you need root canals, and that's yeah. a whole other can whole, of worms we don't yeah. want to open. Right, so, right, right. Unfortunately, not without risk. Right. Uh, so so what do, I mean, I use baking soda and water. That's what mm -hmm. I do. And maybe yep. very occasionally I'll use a little diluted hydrogen peroxide at right. you know the 3% and then even diluted. Um, but I actually just... I like my tooth color because I yep. think it's natural. It's natural. Right. And a lot of it has <laughs> to do with skin color as well. I mean, sure. yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, I've, I have whitened my teeth. Um, I did it back 20 years ago when it was in vogue. I liked the result. It, it reversed a little bit, but again, I'm very happy with my tooth color um, because it, it fits me and it's kind of what I was born with. Now yeah. I can get staining and, and after a, a good, cleaning with a registered dental hygienist that I go to twice a year, they do look a little brighter. And that's another great way to get a good smile. Get your teeth cleaned, right? Get a lot of people are a whitening of... at home, but yes. they haven't had their teeth cleaned. 100%. This is such a good point. Uh, yeah. And they're using um, air abrasion. I mean, geez, yep. the air abrasion, because yep. I get a little like tea and coffee stain too. It really yep. takes it off. So, yep. Yep. you know, speak to your dental yep. provider about it. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I think our message is just be cautious with yep. Yep. bleaching and, and right. what's being sold to you at your dental right. office. So let's kind of recap the way we would whiten our own teeth or our mm -hmm. children's teeth. Uh, A, obviously professional supervision. Professional supervision is great because you know at what point when to stop. Remember, there's that little regression. You get to a certain point and then there's a little bit of a recalibration of the tooth color because the moisture comes back to the tooth and that darkens the tooth a little bit. I don't even want to use the word darken. It gives the tooth more body in terms of three-dimensionality and color. Uh, but when the tooth is very dry, it's going to look brighter and white. That's what happens to chalky surfaces. Mm -hmm. Um Professional supervision, I think, is key, and you're going to have to pay for that, but it's worth it. A, you won't damage your teeth. You'll know when to stop. Uh, if you get into that sensitivity uh, area, th that can be addressed properly. What else? High water content in the gel. I think that's important. And pH. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of I, I've just before we, you know we wanted to do this uh, this episode on whitening. I did a scan of all the research, and the pH varies a lot. Like it really from does. oh, from like like hydrochloric acid levels extremely acidic to extremely yeah basic. <laughs> right and and that's how it works in many ways yeah. i mean if you if you etch off the top layer of a stained tooth surface yeah it's going to look very chalky and white but then what <laughs> right yeah 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 what else? so i use well nano hydroxyapatite i think yep. that's one of the best things to do Agreed. In oil pull. so yep. i i use nano hydroxyapatite and i oil pull and i am very aware of you know, nasal breathing. So I lip tape. Right, right. Um, Let's put that on the top of the list. Yeah. The hydroxyapatite, oral pulling, uh, good oral hygiene, frequent dental visits, then professional yeah. supervision, have a long conversation with your uh, 
dental professional. It can even be your, uh, your dental hygienist. I'd they're, say they're, probiotics, prebiotics, yep. um, oral microbiome, uh, yes. make sure that's sound. You know, if you have gum disease, you're going to have gum recession. That makes the base of your tooth look very yellow. That's the root portion. Can you whiten that? No, make sure you're whitening the right, that you're you're able yeah. to whiten the right part of the tooth. Uh, custom trays and aligners or, or liners. I think that's very important. Yes. Don't paint, do, don't do a paint on or a, a strip, cover it, put the gel in there, uh, make sure it's a, a neutral pH hydrated, uh, from a reputable company. Uh, I'll put some suggestions uh, into the show notes and, um, and keep it at 10% or less go slowly, but make sure the only way you're applying it is in a very well custom made tray that holds the gel only up against the tooth, not yes. the root surface of the tooth and not the gums. Yeah. Oh, and so you're not swallowing a bunch of this. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, and then if you're very, um, hyper aware of the color of your teeth, I would mm -hmm. probably take caution with tea and coffee mm -hmm. and red wine and some yep. of these foods that stain yep. uh, because they stain pretty quickly. You know, even they after do. professional cleaning, the stain, the stain will come back pretty quickly. So. Exactly. Right. And I then, are, and then over age 18, I would not. Oh yeah. When yeah. you said kids, I mean, I don't bleach kids teeth. Yeah. So right. I, I can, I don't convince them. I yeah. discuss. Well, the EU, the EU the cuts it off at 18. Yeah. And there must be a reason for that. And, and I would agree. I, I did whiten my oldest daughter's teeth. She was about 12 or 13 and she had delayed a, a, a lot of sensitivity for a long period of time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and just as parents, mm -hmm. just my other advice, just be mindful of what we say in front of our children. Yep. Especially in their formative years where they're already maybe a little self-conscious. Right. Um, just be careful because you yep. can create more insecurities that aren't necessary yep. when their teeth are the perfect, perfect color. Exactly. Them, and you know? social media is, we can put that in the same category, uh, Not just real. listening to social media. That'll, <laughs> that'll give you body dysmorphia and tooth dysmorphia. Oh, man. Yeah. I so, know. well, that's sure. great. I hope, I hope this clears up a lot. I, again, I get a lot of questions. I know you do as well do. about whitening and there, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And I think we've kind of let it get out of control uh, as a profession. I could not yeah. agree more. I could not agree more. Yeah. And take care with your yeah TikTok videos that you're yeah. watching. And and we're always saying, oh, you know, come in and see us because we're better at it. But then when you do come see us, we're not giving you enough information and explaining to you what needs to be done, how, and what's safe, and and so yeah. Anyway, I think I think we're getting better at it. Uh, and the EU is very good about it. Canada has some strict regulations. The U S is kind of all over the map that there is a, a kind of a voluntary group that the FDA recommended that, uh, uh, manufacturers of the gels would participate in, but I haven't seen any activity in that. The ADA of course, wants to make it very exclusive. So that benefits its members. Anyway, yeah. it's best to sit down. First of all, listen to us for the last half hour. I think we've explained a lot and then really sit down with your dental professional, uh, and make sure that they understand that this is a damaging procedure, but that if you, if it's needed and something we didn't talk about was self-esteem. I mean, in some cases, you know, this could help you, but absolutely. That's, I mean, I'm pro that 100%. Yeah, so, yeah. but there could be other issues as well. And just make sure it's really necessary. And if you do do it, I guess this is our closing statement here. If you do do it, just be very careful, know what you're doing and make sure you're getting professional supervision. And, you know, typically you'll get a good result, but don't plan on doing it every few years or every day or every don't Saturday night. It. Right. Yeah. Don't yeah. overdo right, it. Right. Don't yeah. Overdo it. Just like we don't recommend night. it. 80, 20 principle, or you say the 90, 10. I like 90, 10, <laughs> but I get a lot of pushback. So I'm back down to 80, 20, right? Okay. <laughs> anyway, Stacey, that was great. Thank you. I think, Thank we, you, Dr. B. I think we demystified it, uh, I hope. And then if there are any questions, uh, we can talk more about it. And uh, I would love to, for the next topic, I'd love to talk about, speaking of a lot of questions uh, and issues with health and safety is the varnish, the dental varnish. That's oh, the, yeah. I love this. We, we you know, I know, I know a lot about this. You do. Well, you're it's a pediatric a of, dentist. Well, I've right? rabbit hole, but a lot of dentists don't. So this yeah. is a good one. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Let's tackle that okay. next time. Okay. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll get lots of hate mail from other dentists and maybe even the ADA, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. They okay. just need a little, I'll do a teaser. They just need to look at the MSDS. <laughs> I love it. I've seen it. It's scary. Anyway, we'll talk about that okay. next time. 
everything we've discussed, most of it uh, is available on askthedentist.com. And again, if you're looking for a functional provider, we have a directory on the website. If you're looking for a dentist that will have this conversation with you and sees whitening the way they should, as we've discussed, then go to the directory, askthedentist.com slash directory. Stacy, always a pleasure. Look forward to our next discussion. Thank you, Mark. Take care. All right. Take care. See you later. How was that? Great. Oh, good. Good. Oh, it's still recording. Hang on. Oh. It doesn't matter.